as a human family, we've had an enormous wake-up call to how connected we are with a tiny little virus that comes along and shuts us down. We all live in this world together. The same blood flows in me and every any other person. We are facing the challenges of an ecosystem that is stressed. Things are not moving as fast as they should. Things are improving, but not as fast as they should. The challenges that we are facing, they are materializing so fast that it's not only my children or grandchildren which will experience the consequences if we fail. To do it, we need to do it together. Collaboration, north, south, east, west, you know, black, brown, white. Strengthen the diversity of the human family is what we need right now to get us past this incredibly difficult time. It might sound like it's impossible, but you know, that's what we work towards, making the um, impossible possible. 20 years ago, a small group of United Nations and business leaders came up with a visionary proposal. I propose that you, the business leaders here gathered in Davos, and we, the United Nations, initiate a global compact of shared values and principles which will give a human face to the global market. I always say part of Kofi Annan's genius was he invited business, but he also addressed civil society and labor organizations. The mission of the United Nations Global Compact is to mobilize companies around the world to align their operations and strategies with 10 universal principles in the areas of human rights, labor, environment, and anti-corruption. The UN represents the body that aims to drive international cooperation and drive peace and security for humanity. And I think it unifies all of society around this set of 17 goals. Our objectives uh, cannot be met if the private sector doesn't play an, a fundamental role. And so the Global Compact is a, a platform in which all those uh, businesses that abide by the principles of, uh, and values of the United Nations and of the Charter uh, to work together representing uh, the best of humankind. For the last two decades, the initiative has grown to encompass local networks in more than 60 countries, engaging directly with over 10,000 companies. The local networks are our global footprint around the world, and they work with us to translate the 10 principles as well as the sustainable development goals into actionable pieces of work for businesses globally. It is so decided. Since 2015, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Climate Agreement have provided the most powerful common agenda that the world has ever seen, with an essential role spelled out for business. L'accord de Paris pour le climat est accepté. Any business that continues to operate under its own self-interest will not be around very long. So businesses that have a strong purpose, that understand how they can make society better, will be embraced by society and will be around for a long time. Be the change that you want to see in business. I truly believe that companies who do not put sustainability, the SDGs, in their strategies, they're going to disappear. The mindset of consumers has changed. They increasingly want to buy from companies that are contributing to society as a whole. Business must be part of the solution in when we address these big global problems. The focus has shifted to both the short term and the long term, both doing well and doing good, making profits and making a change. This is a reality of the world now. Leaders need to lead sustainably. The United Nations Global Compact is leading the transformation ahead, challenging companies to take more ambitious action on the sustainable development goals. I think it's absolutely impossible to face the challenges of today, the very quick change uh, that is happening without having the youth uh, leading the way and helping us define uh, the right strategies, the right policies, the right approaches to address uh, the, the global problems. The world is waking up and change is coming, whether you like it or not.
The world today has got more opportunities than it has the challenges um, that can be overcome by the opportunities that we have. You find people in the most desperate of situations determined to fight for a better future. That's the kind of world I want. What has changed in a very short period of time is that the narrative is different, and that is fantastic. If you want to have a good business, you have to mobilize people. A business is a sum of people working to something. More and more people realize that sustainability is really about making the pie bigger, better, and more inclusive. I hope in the future, all businesses in the world will think about their own purpose. Businesses can only exist when they have a purpose. We've got to show progress. We've got to reverse what's happening. I see the Global Compact as an incredible organization working together with businesses to build a more sustainable world. We are united across the globe for the globe. We're united despite our challenges, no matter how daunting the task may seem. We are united by possibilities because this is bigger than one business, because we are better together. We all have the same job. We are united in the business of a better world. Welcome delegates to the 2021 Leaders Summit, a 26 hour epic deep dive with a mission to engage and inspire. Brought to you by the United Nations Global Compact and me, Femi O'K, and Dan Thomas, and also James Chow, our hosts, your hosts actually, and my co hosts over the next 26 hours. We are literally going to be chasing the sun. Welcome. If you're watching on UN Web TV, really nice to see you. Really, really, really welcome. You will be with us for the next five hours. And then you need to change over onto our hop-in platform. So we will give you our registration details in a little bit so you know how to do that. So you can watch for 26 hours if you have the stamina to do that. This is a knowledge sharing event. This is a, an event where you're going to go, aha, I can do that, that is possible. We can create and recover and build back better. Let me give you a couple of virtual tools in order to be able to do that. Hashtag Leaders Summit, hashtag uniting. If you're on Twitter, tag your tweets with at Global Compact. Now, most of you who are registered, so we have over 120 countries, 12,000 people who are delegates, look around, you can see them on the Hopin platform. There's a little section where you can click and actually direct message, video chat with your delegates around the world, chat in the chat section on the Hopin platform as well. Let me give you a little tour as you get used to the places that you can go. There are six stages. This is the main stage. But for the six stages, we have uh, two languages that you can actually use. There's, we have Mandarin interpretation, Spanish interpretation. So on the main plenary stage, if you go past the chat, past the balls, then you'll find a little section that will give you interpretation. Click on that. And mute the video, so mute me, and then I will suddenly start speaking Mandarin or Spanish 
fluently the air technology. I will remind you how to do that as the day goes on. So we have so many sessions for you. If you're on the Hop In platform, you can look to see who the speakers are, what the schedule is, what is happening on an hour to hour basis. We will be looking at the UN Global Compact Network, what businesses around the globe are doing, how they're working together to achieve the 2030 agenda. There is so much to do and I want to get us started. The theme for our summit is the year of ambition. You are about to hear from honored guests, VIP guests, heads of government, world leaders, who are going to reflect on this year, what it means, what our mission needs to be. We start with His Excellency, Antonio Guterres, the Secretary General of the United Nations. Welcome. I'm pleased to greet the 2021 United Nations Global Compact Leaders Summit. This is a unique opportunity for business leaders and their partners in government, civil society, and here at United Nations to engage in a crucial global conversation at a crucial time. The impressive agenda focuses on how all of us can work together to build more inclusive economies and societies. Making that vision a reality will require an unprecedented degree of ambition and collective action because we face unprecedented challenges. Our world has changed profoundly in the past year. COVID-19 has taken a tragic toll in human lives and suffering. Despite almost miraculous achievements in vaccine development, the pandemic is far from over. And to date, vaccine distribution has been grossly inequitable. And the economic impact of the COVID crisis has been brutal. Because of this crisis, much of the world's progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals is at grave risk. But even before the pandemic, we were not moving at the speed or scale required to achieve our SDG targets by 2030. Consider where the world stood at the beginning of last year. 700 million people still living in extreme poverty. The gender pay gap closing at a glacial pace. Workers' rights and decent working conditions, a distant dream in vast segments of global industry. Corruption undermining public trust and economic and social development. And the planet hurtling towards climate catastrophe, and it still is. COVID-19 did not cause these problems, but it has exposed them for all to see, highlighting the fragility of our systems and the inequality in our societies. Only through global cooperation at an unprecedented level can we build back from the pandemic, get on track to achieve the SDGs and avert the worst impacts of climate change. And business has a central role to play. Your efforts and leadership can lift the entire world, but you need to embrace transformational change. In every sector, a much deeper, faster and more ambitious response is needed to unleash the social and economic changes demanded by the 2030 Agenda and the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. The 10 principles of the UN Global Compact are a blueprint for such a response in support of human rights, labour, the environment and the fight against corruption. And the Global Compact's new strategy through to 2023 provides a bold, actionable plan for business transformation. Our strategy outlines key actions to scale up your impact on the SDGs and the Paris Climate Agreement. It calls for enhanced corporate accountability, including accountability for cutting carbon emissions in line with the pathway to net zero by mid-century. Every country, city, business and financial institution needs to be fully aligned with the 1.5 degree goal of the Paris Agreement. The strategy also envisions regionally balanced growth of the Global Compact Network. It enables greater flexibility for business action at the local level, with companies adapting to each country's unique context. It seeks to harness the energy of small and medium-sized enterprises, the foundation of our economies. And it promotes stronger business engagement with UN partners, including partnerships to finance the 2030 Agenda. Financing is an indispensable ingredient for success in matching our ambition with real-world outcomes. And yet, a wide gap persists between investments and the amount of capital needed to achieve the global goals. To help bridge the gap, the UN Global Compact has issued a set of principles for integrated SDG finance and investment, developed in partnership with chief financial officers from major corporations. After all, investors and financial institutions have a stake in a sustainable, stable future too. Taken together, all these strategic shifts provide critical opportunities for the global compact and the international business community at a decisive time. As we consider a post-pandemic future, there are two roads before us. One leads back to business as usual and an uncertain fate for people and the planet. 
The other leads forward to an inclusive green recovery. Let us choose wisely at this leaders' summit and move forward, united in ambition and collective action for a world where no one is left behind. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary General. This time last year, the UN Global Compact got a brand new executive director. What a time to start a new job. Sandra Ogiambo, so nice to see you. Not a single gray hair in sight. I'm really fascinated here about <laughs> your year, your reflections. Uh, you survived and you're thriving. Sandra, over to you. Thanks, Femi, and it's really great to be here and to be here with you. Um, it's been indeed a, a remarkable year, uh, a remarkable year of transition, and truly excited to be able to host this uh, Global Compact Leaders Summit today. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, and business leaders, it is a pleasure to join you all here today. We are gathering virtually at a time of great challenge for business, but if we rise to the occasion, it can also be a time of opportunity and transformation. That is why this 2021 Leaders' Summit of the United Nations Global Compact is so important. Events in the extraordinary year since our last Leaders' Summit have proven how fragile our systems and how unequal our societies are. Amidst a pandemic, an economic crisis, and a climate emergency, business as usual is no longer an option. Instead, this is a time for ambition. The world is changing rapidly before our eyes, and as this Leaders' Summit delivers back-to-back -back sessions over the next 20, 26 hours, it'll keep changing. In the next 26 hours, around 400,000 new cases of COVID-19 will be reported, and sadly, as many as 10,000 more lives will be lost due to the pandemic. Inequities in access to vaccine, vaccination and treatment mean that regions such as Latin America and South Asia will suffer disproportionately. In the next 26 hours, even as economic recovery proceeds in some places, the equivalent of 250,000 full-time jobs will be eliminated compared to the pre-pandemic baseline. Women and young people in the Global South will be hit the hardest. In the next 26 hours, tens of thousands of people will likely be displaced from their homes and livelihoods. Most will be forced to move by floods, droughts, and storms stemming from a climate crisis that is increasingly driving migration. But also, in the next 26 hours, all of us here at this remarkable global meeting will engage in a critical discussion about building forward better together. That means that companies, governments, the UN and stakeholders across sectors taking multilateral action to build economies and societies that protect people and the planet. If the past year has taught us anything, it is that no one is truly safe until everyone is safe. Even before COVID-19, the world faced multiple interlinked crises. The pandemic has magnified them. It has worsened wealth and income inequality threaten progress on empowering women and girls, heighten the risk of intergenerational poverty. And although carbon emissions have dropped slightly with the economic slowdown, we are still on a trajectory towards a catastrophic rise in global temperature. Nevertheless, the UN Global Compact remains convinced that business, united, can be a powerful force for good. Let us start with the basics. All Global Compact participant companies have made a commitment to follow our 10 principles on human rights, labor, the environment, and anti-corruption. By integrating these universal principles into their operations and value chains, our more than 12,000 business and 3,000 non-business participants are already making a difference. But exceptional times call for exceptional measures. We are now calling upon business leaders to set much more ambitious, measurable targets for sustainability, and we are holding them to account to drive results and report on their progress. Our latest survey of participants in the UN Global Compact suggests that an increasing number of businesses are prepared to answer the call. 70% of respondents to the global survey said that COVID-19 had made corporate responsibility more important in their companies. In Africa and Asia, 
more than 80% felt that way. Large majorities of participating businesses told us that they had established policies and practices to protect human rights and labor rights. Seven out of 10 had made commitments to reduce carbon emissions. However, most of those companies have not yet established science-based targets for cutting greenhouse gases on a pathway towards net zero emissions by 2050. And so it is on climate and other vital issues, including diversity and gender equality, that a wide gap persists between business ambition and business action. The crux of our dialogue today and tomorrow will be how to close that gap. Friends, it is truly an honor to lead the UN Global Compact at this singular time. I made a leadership transition in a year of uncertainty given the shadow of the COVID-19 pandemic. I knew it would be demanding. Today I look ahead fully aware of how much work we still have to do and confident that we will get the job done. My optimism is based on the resolute purpose displayed by the UN Global Compact's participants in 160 countries and by our 69 superb local networks. Over the past year, we have seen more and more businesses taking the lead or collaborating with others on key issues. Despite obstacles posed by the pandemic, we have taken major strides. One huge step was the adoption of the Global Compact Strategic Plan for 2021 through to 2023. The exciting new plan calls for strategic shifts to boost business action on our 10 principles and impact on the Sustainable Development Goals and the Paris Climate Agreement. These shifts focus on enhanced business accountability, global reach, local flexibility, the essential role of small and medium enterprises, and active engagement with our UN partners. Developed in close consultation with our stakeholders worldwide, the strategy is built for rapid progress on bridging the ambition to action divide. Meanwhile, the UN Global Compact is seeing unprecedented growth. More than 2,000 companies signed on during 2020, and an additional 1,600 have joined us so far this year. With participant companies in more than 160 countries and counting, we are intent on further expansion around the world and in the Global South in particular to balance our network and extend our reach. And as we grow, the Global Compact has been moving ahead with a series of impact accelerator programs expertly managed by our local networks. Through the SDG Ambition Program, we have engaged in some 600 businesses in 65 countries they are setting corporate targets directly aligned with the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. To accelerate business action in the race to a net zero carbon future, we have fostered the continued growth of business ambition for 1.5 degrees campaign, together with our partners in the Science-Based Targets Initiative. Our gender equality program, Target Gender Equality, has been supporting women's meaningful participation and empowerment, starting at the top, in 300 participating companies. And we have been a strong advocate for mandatory due diligence to protect human rights and labor rights in the private sector, as well as business transparency and accountability to fight corruption. Through the new strategic plan and these accelerator initiatives, the UN Global Compact aims to enable continuous tangible progress on corporate sustainability and responsibility because progress is essential for a just, inclusive, and sustainable recovery from COVID-19. Today, businesses must choose between building forward together in a spirit of renewed global cooperation or losing ground by failing to embrace new partnerships and new innovations. By taking part in this summit, you have already chosen a path forward. Let us follow it together for these 26 hours and far beyond uniting business for a better world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sandra Ojiambo. She is the Executive Director of the UN Global Compact. You will be seeing much more, Sandra, through the next 25 hours and a bit, because we are well and truly started on the Leaders Summit 2021, brought to you by the UN Global Compact. So, in our opening, we wanted not just to have world leaders speak, but also do a keynote and also a call to action. You will hear all of those things in the next three leaders. 
I would like to start with Her Excellency her Halima Yaakov. She is the President of the Republic of Singapore. UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres, CEO and Executive Director of UN Global Compact, Senda Ochiambo, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to join you at the 2021 UN Global Compact Leaders Summit. Sustainable development is a global challenge, but one which no country can afford to ignore. Sustainable development allows countries to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Today's summit is a timely and important event. It has been six years since the adoption of the 2030 Agenda. This year's theme, Elevating Ambition for Collective Action, highlights two pertinent issues in achieving this vision. The need to focus on our ambition and to take action together as a global community so that the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, can continue to serve as a global blueprint to support the vulnerable, protect the planet, and build a more prosperous world. We are now at a critical crossroad. The COVID-19 pandemic has threatened to reverse decades of developmental gains. More than 110 million people have been pushed into extreme poverty, of whom more than half are women and girls. 205 million people are expected to be unemployed in 2022. Many countries are also grappling with climate change. At the same time, the pandemic offers us a unique opportunity to rethink the future and forge new pathways towards more inclusive, resilient and sustainable growth. With greater awareness on the importance of balance and integrated development, the global momentum on building sustainable economies has gathered pace in recent years. More countries are now including green initiatives in their post-pandemic recovery plans. Governments are making a concerted effort to integrate environmental and social priorities into their economic plans, and I hope that this will carry on beyond the pandemic. For Singapore, a low-lying city-state with limited natural resources, sustainability has always been an integral part of our development journey. Earlier this year, we launched the Singapore Green Plan 2030, a roadmap to achieve sustainable development and meet our nation's aspirations of net zero emissions. The Green Plan will strengthen Singapore's resilience and bring new opportunities in the green economy, cutting across all sectors, including infrastructure, clean energy, and research and innovation. An important feature of the Singapore Green Plan is that it is a whole of nation project, similar to how the 2030 Agenda cannot be achieved by governments alone, the Green Plan recognises the importance of all stakeholders working together to implement the SDGs. The private sector in particular plays a critical role in bringing the necessary capital and talent to support the implementation of the Green Plan. In this regard, I would like to commend the pivotal role of the UN Global Compact in mobilizing businesses to adopt sustainable practices and align their strategies with the SDGs. In particular, we welcome the Global Compact's new strategy for 2021 to 2023 to scale up the contributions of the global business community to the 2030 Agenda. Indeed, Helping companies and workers transition to the green economy will be key to how they 
being a major player in the ecosystem, can play a role in the achievement of the 2030 Agenda. Let me therefore share three strategies that Singapore is adopting in this area. First, Singapore is re-gearing our key sectors to become more energy and carbon efficient. For example, we are working to transform our energy and chemicals hub, Jurong Island, into a sustainable manufacturing park by 2030. Our vision is for Jurong Island to be a model for the adoption of new sustainability solutions that improve efficiency and reduce emissions. Second, as a financial hub, Singapore is supporting green financing through grants for green and sustainable bonds and loans. This will enable companies to invest in green assets and projects and move towards more sustainable business models. Third, Singapore will be growing new sectors in the green economy. We want to be a leading carbon services hub and a marketplace for high quality carbon offsets. We will also step up our investment in research, innovation and enterprise in the coming years, as well as support the development and commercialization of innovative solutions in areas including clean and renewable energy, the circular economy, and low carbon hydrogen. With these strategies, we hope that businesses will see sustainability as a key competitive advantage and new opportunities for growth and job creation. 2021 is a critical year. We have less than 10 years to implement the 2030 Agenda and to fulfil its promise of leaving no one behind. The reality is that even before the pandemic, we were not on track to realise most of the SDGs. As we enter this decade of action and delivery, we must act urgently and mobilise political will in order to accelerate the transition to a more sustainable future. I hope this summit will do just that by raising ambition, prompting action and delivering results. Singapore will continue to fully support the efforts of the UN Global Compact and its local chapters, including the Global Compact Network Singapore. For a small island state, Sustainability issues are not just aspirational goals, but also existential challenges. Now, more than ever, countries, businesses and people will need to work together to build a better future for everyone. So let us elevate our ambition and take collective action as we rededicate our commitment to achieving Sustainable Development for All. Thank you. Thank you, President Jacob. Welcome to, to the Leader State, the Most Honourable Andrew Honus, the Prime Minister of Jamaica. Excellencies, the United Nations Global Compact Leader Summit is convened at a time when leadership is required to address the challenges of COVID-19 and simultaneously ongoing development needs. Our recovery must mark the commencement of a new era of solidarity driven by collective action for systemic change. The United Nations remains the most appropriate platform for impactful partnership among states, businesses, and civil society. As the world's largest sustainability initiative, I commend the work of the UN Global Compact to raise the level of ambition for corporate sustainability and collective action for sustainable development goals. As members of this compact, you are positioned to catalyze change within corporate society 
exemplify the merits of sustainable business that support national development and embrace the principles of the SDGs. Agenda 2030 is the blueprint for shaping this new era of sustainability. Jamaica has anchored the SDGs in the National Development Plan Vision 2030 and its successive three-year medium-term socioeconomic policy framework. This framework is strategic for mobilizing action at national and local levels. With regard to this endeavor, the participation of private sector organizations in national development planning is critical. Their inclusion translates government policy and global development frameworks such as Agenda 2030 into actions for implementation by stakeholders. The World Business Council for Sustainable Development has indicated that environmental and social performance are directly related to financial performance. This effect could be exponentially increased if the asymmetrical access to organizational systems, technologies, and trade arrangements that disadvantage small economies such as ours were addressed. Members of the compact must advocate for the removal of those barriers. Excellences, it is incumbent on us small island developing states to reemphasize the value of bold collaborative action on sustainability. We have a duty to promote the circular economy locally and to strengthen international cooperation to establish and scale models towards zero waste development benefiting both the economy and the environment. To this extent, Jamaica's commitment to this model is evidenced by the development of a number of green technology projects to provide cleaner energy. Similar investments in established and emerging technologies are needed to fuel economic development, reduce climate risk, and achieve clean energy targets. Jamaica's commitment to climate change adaptation and resilience is further demonstrated in the submission of its updated nationally determined contributions, with more ambitious targets and broader sectoral coverage to include agriculture, energy, forestry, waste management, and reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. We are also making strides in the adoption of nature-based solutions with plans for the implementation of the Blue Carbon Restoration Project. This project will seek to restore over 1,000 hectares of degraded mangrove forests and boost ecosystems-based livelihood opportunities while building climate resilience for that area. Sustainable recovery requires decisive action to address vulnerabilities, build resilience, reduce poverty and inequality, and grow sustainable economies. Jamaica is prepared and committed to playing its part and continuing its role to further this agenda. Let us seize the day and the present opportunity to work together towards securing a sustainable future for all. I thank you. Prime Minister of Jamaica to the Prime Minister of the Republic of Korea. Please welcome His Excellency Mr. Kim Bukyum. Good to see you. Antonio Guterres, UN Sammu총장님, Sanda Ozambo, UN Global Compact Sammu총장님, Halima Yaakob, Singapore 대통령님, Andrew Holles, Jamaica 총리님, 그리고 이번 정상회의에 참가하신 전 세계의 기빈 여러분, 2021 UN 글로벌 컴팩트 정상회의에 초대해 주셔서 감사합니다. 코로나19 상황에서 전 세계는 그 어느 때보다 국제사회의 공동 행동이 필요하다는 것을 절감하고 있습니다. 방역은 물론이고 백신의 개발과 생산, 유통과 접종 과정에서 국가 간의 협력뿐만 아니라 정부와 기업, 시민사회의 참여와 협력이 절실했습니다. 이제 백신의 개발로 코로나19라는 긴 터널의 끝이 보이고 있습니다. 그러나 이번 감염병 위기를 계기로 지구의 환경과 인류의 미래를 위한 인류 전체의 근본적인 성찰과 실천을 더욱 강하게 요구되고 있습니다. 
이러한 측면에서 인권, 노동, 환경, 반부패를 기치로 지속가능 발전 목표 SDG의 달성을 목표로 하는 UN 글로벌 컴팩트의 역할이 과거 어느 때보다 막중합니다. 대한민국은 지난달 포용적 녹색 회복을 통한 2050 탄소중립을 주제로 P4G 서울 녹색 미래 정상회의를 개최했습니다. 이번 P4G에서는 포용적 녹색 전환을 위한 국제적 민관 협력의 내용을 담은 서울 선언문을 채택했습니다. 대한민국은 또한 2050년까지 해양 플라스틱 쓰레기 제로를 약속했고 모범적인 파리협약 이행을 위해 2030 국가 온실가스 감축 목표를 상향하겠다고 밝혔습니다. 정부 이런 노력에 유엔 글로벌 컴팩트에 참여하고 있는 많은 한국 기업들이 적극적으로 동참할 예정입니다. 아울러 국제사회에 대한 기여도 더욱 높일 것입니다. 녹색 전환을 위한 공적 개발 원조를 확대하고 글로벌 차원의 기후위기 대응에서 선진국과 개도국의 가교 역할을 충실히 하겠습니다. 6월 G7 정상회의, 9월 유엔총회, 10월 G20 정상회의, 그리고 11월 제26차 유엔 기후변화협약 당사국 총회까지 대한민국은 포용적 녹색 회복을 통한 글로벌 수준의 탄소중립 실현 논의를 적극 선도하겠습니다. 한국의 속담에 천리길도 한 걸음부터 라는 말이 있습니다. 전 오늘 정상회의가 우리 아이들이 살아갈 미래, 공동체의 지속가능한 미래를 위한 중요한 첫걸음이 되리라고 확신합니다. 앞으로도 유엔 글로벌 컴팩트가 국제사회에서 훌륭한 리더십을 발휘해 줄 것을 진심으로 기대합니다. 감사합니다. 
UNEP, the United Nations Environment Programme, is encouraging governments to use natural capital alongside produced and human capital to account for and to deliver a true and inclusive measure of growth. And the same applies to businesses. If a business is making money in the short term but damaging the planet in the long term, it needs to reflect this in its balance sheet and, of course, mend its ways. The second step is to set science-based targets for nature, climate and for pollution. That means adopting a transparent and time-bound plan for net zero operation. That means ensuring that businesses and their operations are nature positive. It means adopting circular models to reuse and recycle resources. And it means dealing with that toxic trail of pollution that industries and businesses can leave behind. And the third step is to hold suppliers and trading partners to the same high standards. We're talking about being comprehensive, transparent and holistic. A business internal operations can be squeaky clean, but if it is outsourcing environmental damage, either domestically or abroad, it is still part of the problem. All of this applies equally to investors, to bankers and to insurers. We can no longer afford to have ethical finance on the fringes. These issues cannot merely be left to the CSR director, but must be the key business principle held in the C-suite and by the CEO and the board. They must power the change. We are seeing ever stronger commitments on this front, which we celebrate. We have 229 banks covering a third of global banking industry signed up to the principles for responsible banking. And the Net Zero Banking Alliance has 44 banks with 30 trillion US dollars on board. And the Net Zero Asset Owners Alliance brings together 40 asset owners with 6 trillion to work towards decarbonization. And finally, we need transparency and independent oversight on these processes and commitments to avoid greenwashing. Greenwashing is a cynical attempt to gain the financial benefits of a sustainable profile without doing any of the work. And it directly harms our efforts to build a better world. Because of course, businesses run on earnings and profitability, and that's a fine thing. But there can be no profit if there is no planet. Backing sustainability is the only sensible way to boost the corporate bottom line and to make everyone's lives better. And the private sector needs to lead the way. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to address the 21st Global Compact Leaders Summit. You are coming together at an exciting time in a year of ambition, which is also a year of global anti-corruption action. Earlier this month, the UN General Assembly held its first ever special session against corruption. Countries adopted a political declaration, which includes a clear commitment to ensure that private sector entities are well equipped to conduct business with integrity and transparency. Now is the time to take this momentum forward. Governments cannot fight corruption on their own. Private sector companies are the engines of economic growth and the providers of social protection. By honoring the rule of law and operating with integrity, they represent a crucial partner in global efforts against corruption and in building prosperous and fair societies. A committed private sector is also an essential ally in the fight against cybercrime and in preventing human trafficking and forced labor in supply chains. As the guardian of the UN Conventions Against Corruption and Transnational Organized Crime, as well as the Global Compact Principle 10, the UN Office on Drugs and Crime is here to support you. Together with the UN Global Compact, we held a private sector forum alongside the General Assembly Special Session, bringing together over 130 integrity leaders. This summit is a renewed opportunity for you to share strategies for improving integrity in industries and supply chains, driving awareness through training, and using the power of diversity to break down corrupt networks. In order to better support you in the coming year, UNODC will step up cooperation between the Global Compact local networks and our network of offices in 86 countries.
We will also strengthen efforts to include SMEs in anti-corruption responses with an updated series of our Fight Against Corruption e-learning modules to be launched at the Conference of the State Parties to the UN Convention in December in Egypt. I hope that you will use the Leader Summit to make valuable connections across regions and industries and stand with UNODC against corruption. I look forward to our continued engagement for integrity. Thank you.